So this is the Ordinance Committee meeting of June 15th, and it's 6 o'clock. I'm Councilor David Murphy with Councilor Maureen Carney and Ryan O'Donnell. Uh, and we are being audio and video recorded. We're having minutes taken. Uh, we are all here, full house. Um, no public comment because there's no public here. So I'm sorry about that, but no public comment tonight. First thing on the agenda is approval of minutes from May 18th. Second. Second. Any discussion on minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And we have a public hearing, but it seems to be scheduled for 6.05. And being that it's not 6.05, we'll move on and do a couple other things first in case the public shows up for the public hearing, which is, I'm sure, on the top of everyone's list. Let's see. We have some appointments, new appointments to the Human Rights Commission. Douglas Ross. Joel Morse. Douglas Ross is of 73 Barrett Street, a term from May of this year to June of 2018. And Joel Morse of 51 Vernon Street, also from May 15th until June 18th. I would move approval of them both uh, to a positive recommendation. Mm -hmm. We have a second on that? Second. And you know both of these? Uh, well, and are uh, acquainted with both these gentlemen. Actually, both of both these gentlemen were present at the recent recession oh. mm -hmm. for well, also for the council hearing on the budget, but um, or Mr. Ross was. Yeah. But they were both present at a reception the mayor had for the new police chief candidates, mm -hmm. and so I was impressed that they showed um, civic interest in that important decision. And, um, I don't know them very well, but I had a chance to talk to both, so I think they're willing to serve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councilor, any comment? Uh, no, that sounds very good to me. All right. Then all in favor of uh, recommending them for appointment, say aye. 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 Opposed? I don't think there are only three of us. Uh, also, um, for the Disability Commission, we have Chris Palmas. Is that how you say his name? Chris Palmers? Palmas? P-A-L-A-M-E-S? I guess I don't know the pronunciation of 659 Park Hill Road in Florence. This would be a new appointment replacing uh, Susan McCreary, who has an unexpired term. So this would run from June 15 to November 16. I would move a positive recommendation for Mr. Palmas. Palmas, uh, second? Second. All right, any questions or discussion on this one? I, I just, I've known Chris, I've seen him and talked to him on multiple occasions and I think he's a, he'd be a good advocate for this issue. Very good. Then all in favor of a positive recommendation to council say aye. 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 Opposed? Obviously not. We're all in favor. Uh, and then Carla uh, Velez of 80 Barrett Street and Sarah Weinberger. Um, replacing Sarah Weinberger. Replacing Sarah Weinberger. Um, and this is to the Human Rights Commission. Chris was going to the Committee on Disabilities. Human Rights Commission is Sarah Velez, 80 Barrett Street. This is a new appointment. Um, replacing the expired term of Sarah Weinberger, June 15 to June 18. And uh, I spoke to Councillor, I've, I've not spoken to Carla directly. I spoke to Councillor Labarge this afternoon, who said she does not know her personally, but she spoke to Natasha, who's the chair of that commission, and Natalia. Natasha, mm -hmm. Natalia. Mm -hmm. Natalia and uh, said that she was very encouraged and excited to have her come. So Marianne said based on that, she certainly would support her appointment. Um, uh, likewise, I mean, yeah. the chair of the commission is... Is excited to have right. her, so mm -hmm. I think that's a good indication. So uh, do we have a I'll recommendation? i move a uh, positive recommendation. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. And magically it's 6.05. <laughs> so, um, we have a public hearing regarding proposed zone changes or changing property to special conservancy. And uh, it says it's a joint public hearing, but planning's are, planning board's already done theirs, according to Carolyn. So, uh, and she's here to speak to us. So do we have a motion to open the public hearing? I move. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are open for a public hearing and Carolyn's gonna present. Great, thank you. Um, so this is um, not a map change. This is a text change to the zoning ordinance um, as 
you probably recall, because we're doing um, we're doing uh, the plan implementation in house. We're going methodically through the zoning and trying to make sure it's consistent with um, the goals and objectives of the plan. Um, we've done uh, um, several of the commercial districts gone through and revised the tables and um, updated those and modified some of the uses allowed. Last year, we went through the urban A, B, and C districts, which were the first of the residential districts that we made modifications um, to, and also reformatting to create a separate table for each of those districts. So you can go to the table and figure out what's allowed, what are the dimensional requirements, what kind of design standards, if any, are there. So um, we, so, in one sense, this special conservancy district change is just one of those um, that was a necessary change to sort of bring up, bring the code up um, to be consistent with the way we've been moving ahead with implementing the long range plan um, and creating a separate table for each district. Um, it rose to the next um, one on the list because we wanted to make some minor tweaks and corrections that it was basically an oversight when we um, remapped, we did a mapping of the Special Conservancy District about a year ago to make all the floodplain districts consistent. So we had um, the Meadows floodplain was treated under Special Conservancy going back sort of prior to a year ago. And then we had a watershed protection district for all the um, rivers and streams in the city um, they were also floodplain. So a year and a half ago or so, we took all the rivers and streams that were FEMA mapped 100 year flood and 500 year flood, and we made those special conservancy districts so that we had, were treating the floodplains the same throughout the city. When we did that, we took the watershed protection district, which was an overlay on top of an underlying zoning district, and converted it to special conservancy. There was, um, one um, URB zoned area in Leeds, and I have the blow up just as for interest sake, but I'm just sort of, this is a long way of explaining why this popped up to the surface now, rather than maybe some other ones that might seemingly be more critical. Um, but we had, um, Urban Residential B in this area in Leeds, and the yellow outline shows the um, floodplain, which is now Special Conservancy. It lays on top of, the floodplain comes up over this church property in Leeds, um, which has been on the market for a long time. And if you remember going back a couple of years ago, we, in order to um, allow flexibility in the reuse of those historic schools and churches and other civic buildings that were no longer being used for their original function, um, we um, made modifications with this church particularly in mind, because there are a few of them that we knew were coming on the market. But, um, so in the URB context, uh, we incorporated the allowance for the reuse of these historic um, religious buildings. But then when we came back and remapped the floodplain, we inadvertently essentially took away that flexibility because we didn't write into the Special Conservancy District the same flexibility for the reuse of historic properties. So um, what that means is that um, you know, the city going forward all along knew that this was one of these buildings that we wanted to make sure um, was given some latitude in reusing so that it wouldn't be torn down and it wouldn't necessarily change the character of the neighborhood by being torn down. So um, we um, uh, discovered when the realtor called to find out whether, you know, what kind of uses could be approved through site plan from the planning board that in fact, we had inadvertently taken away that ability by um, changing this to a social conservancy district. So one of the changes in your packet for SC that um, wasn't in SC before is the allowance for flexibility for the reuse of historic um, religious and school properties. 
Um, so that's a new thing in the Special Conservancy District that we haven't had before. And there are a couple other minor tweaks to the text, but otherwise, all the same uses and lot size and that, that kind of thing has um, is stays the same. We're just um, formatting the table in, that's con uh, in a way that's consistent with the way we formatted the other residential tables so that you'll go in and find the SC table lined up next to the other district tables. Um, so um, that is sort of, that's probably the biggest change to the SC district that's in front of you. Um, we've also, the minor tweaks that are proposed in here are to adjust the setback requirements for detached or ground mounted photovoltaic systems to be consistent with the tweaks that we've made in other districts, meaning that they just need to meet the standard setback requirements for other detached structures in the district, so sheds and, and um, garages and that kind of thing. Originally, when we first adopted the uh, PV, uh, ground-mounted PV systems that were detached and not over parking lots, um, there was a 50-foot setback from all the property boundaries, and we found that that's um, too stringent in many cases and also doesn't really make sense when we allow sheds and other things to be much closer to the property line. <coughs> so that changes in here as well. Um, so that um, those are four feet, which is the standard setback for detached structures that don't have any um, living component. Um, and let's see, I just want to make sure I cover the other. Um, the other thing is there's um, administrative review of PV installations when it's over a parking lot or an airport as opposed to a planning board review of <coughs> mounted systems. Um, and then the other PV elements um, are consistent with what we've, how we've treated them in the URA, B, and C district. So if the church stays a church, there really isn't any change. Unless right. they want to make a physical change of some sort. Right, but the church won't stay, I mean, it's not being used now. Mm -hmm. um, we think there, so there are two pieces, there are two structures on that church property in Leeds. And um, it's likely they'll have two different buyers with two different opportunities for reuse. One of them was the rectory building, I guess. That's what you call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and since in the Special Conservancy, we don't allow residential uses, um, new residential, mm -hmm. um, there might have been an issue with reusing that building. Reusing um, the church building itself, yeah. because the other, the other was a residence. Right, but if it's, uh, I'm not, I can't remember the size, you might know the size of it, but if it's um, more easily reused as a two unit or three unit, the Special Conservancy wouldn't allow that. Whereas if you have the um, allowance for the reuse with planning board approval, then you could do that. They'd still need to meet all the building codes for building mm -hmm. above the floodplain, but it just um, provides that same flexibility that it would have otherwise also. Yeah. But as a wide. single family residence, it could stay the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other piece of it is since it's one, technically one parcel, the church in, in selling um, the property, the church is thinking about dividing it off, right, to sell the church separately from the building. And the other piece of it is when you create a new lot in the Special Conservancy District, you have to have a 40-acre minimum. <laughs> so they wouldn't have been able to carve off that lot unless this change is made, mm -hmm. or they won't be able to until and unless this change is made. Could, could you point out to me exactly where the new uh, bullet point is or the new provision that makes it clear that old use or new uses are allowed? Sure. Um, so it's going to be in the um, section under uses allowed, which I think is the third page. Mm -hmm. right. um, and it's actually the last bullet under site plan approval, the last bullet on the page, reuse of historical educational religious buildings oh, okay. for any residential use, live workspace, office, provided that no more than 20% of the floor area shall be used for medical, banking, or any offices. 
where our primary function is to provide services to retail customers or individuals. And then it goes on just to reiterate, um, you may have forgotten this part of it was that all such uses approved by the, and meaning approved by the planning board or site plan um, shall be within the footprint of the existing building and may only be approved contingent upon protection of all the historically contributing portions of the building with a historic preservation restriction granted to the city of Northampton in a form acceptable to the planning board with input from the historical commission as preserving the key character defining features visible from the road, but not necessarily meeting the federal and state preservation standards for the entire building. Uh, the existing building may be expanded to accommodate elevators and stairwells, portions of the building that are not part of the original architecture of the building, which don't contribute to the historical or architectural significance of the building, as determined by the planning board with input from the historical commission may be demolished. And then lot size requirements are equal to those existing residential uses. Are there any other places um, where there was a new overlap established? Other structures that might be affected or pretty much just this one? I think this is the only one that was affected. But this isn't in any way construed as spot zoning? No. Um, and the reason is the, there was clear intent all along to allow this for all of our historic schools and religious institutions throughout. And in fact, we purposely did it when it was URB. It was just an oversight when we pulled it out. And it's done to accommodate the flood contour, so. Um, the special conservancy, right? Yeah, so it's, you know, it may seem spotlight, but it's right. because of the spotlight from the flood contour, exactly. not, not by choice of human, but by right. contour Where the river of the flood goes. Zone. So <laughs> yeah. that's how it wound up that way, a little yeah. anomaly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? No. Nope. And you're all, you're all set? Um, Take a minute if you want to, because mm -hmm. a lot of Ward 3 falls into this. I mean, you, I mean, you've got a lot of special conservancy there. There may not be a ton of structures. Right, so no other significant changes you could imagine or new limitations or prohibitions that would affect residential properties you know, down by the Oxbow or in the Meadows. This seems to actually be more yes. liberal than the other yeah. version. You know, it seems yeah. to I mean, we did do a little bit of clarification in here to, um, to... Were, were greenhouses seasonal before? Because I noticed that the greenhouse section, it says it, you know, it doesn't seem like you should leave it up. No, um, there are different provisions. So there are some that are allowed, I think this is what you're referring to. Um, we didn't make any changes to that type of use from, we just carried it straight over from the existing code. Um, so there are, there are uses allowed by right if it's seasonal, and then there are uses, so green, um, I think it's really the sale, it's not necessarily the greenhouse, but it's um, retail sales from a greenhouse, from a greenhouse. which are seasonal, require, don't require a permit, but if it's, year-round that's then true but it's the sales way. component yes so somebody that's just simply growing at that location and and selling elsewhere or somebody that does wholesale right you know and ships the product out they're, they're not subject to the seasonal part of it right yeah. right okay because right. i think there's some people down there that have greenhouses mm -hmm. but i don't think they actually bring traffic okay and i guess you know the bottom line is no new residential structures are allowed in special conservancy right um, and that's not changing are, has, right. is there any rules or setbacks or dimensional requirements changing relative to accessory structures if someone has a house and they want to put up a shed or anything like that no um no new restrictions no There's new restrictions in fact we clarified i think the existing code doesn't really speak to accessory mm -hmm. structures and the setbacks mm -hmm. so we added that in here because it really just said use the URB standard oh, instead sure. of spelling it out there. So it was always interpreted to mean that it was four feet. Okay. So you just took it and inserted it in this, uh, right. carried so over the right URB there. stuff. Yeah. Right. No change, but clearer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? No. So clear. here's where we'd ask for opponents and proponents, but being where the only ones here. Uh, we, we can't really do that. Um, so if we don't have anything else, we can.
can get a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, a motion for a recommendation. I'll move to recommend as uh, as offered by the uh, Office of Planning and Sustainability. Great. Second. Second. Okay, any more discussion? Um, and we did close the public hearing, right? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. And uh, is there anything that wasn't reasonably assumed and put on the agenda, or are we set for today? And do you need anything else from us? No. No. Then a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Aye.